love being back teaching, don't you? Oh, I've missed him. It's what I do best. Have you been seeing anybody lately? No. Well, you know, I, I know, know this really cute guy. guy. <laughs> got two dollars left. You want to buy me lunch? <laughs> That's one dollar more than I've got. You know, things haven't changed much since we were here. Oh, you haven't, but maybe I don't need lunch. <laughs> I wish I looked like that. I want you to meet some friends of mine. Why need it? Michael. Hi. I'd like you to meet Angela. She's Hi. in Los Angeles. Nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? Listen, don't let us interrupt. Yeah. We'll see you later. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Talk me into it. <laughs> this one too, okay? Uh, this, I think you'll be good in this one too. Listen, this color is perfect. It's gorgeous. Now it's forget about me. What are you wearing to the faculty party? What a thing to wear. for how long now? What, two years? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you've been working the room for me. Well, I mean, I thought maybe you'd forgotten how. It'll come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're absolutely right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Rebecca. Sorry. I'm gonna have to go. It's a long drive back to L.A., and I've got court in the morning. So. Oh, of course. I'm so glad I came up. It's good oh, to see thank you. thank you. Oh, no. You're gonna need a ride home. I... Oh, one of the faculty will take me. Don't worry about it. You sure? Sure. Professor, I'd be more than happy to give you a ride home. Oh, I know that's very nice of you, but I don't want to... No, it's no trouble. I'm Benjamin Nash. I'm in your undergraduate philosophy class, along with 200 others. <laughs> So, you're okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? All right, drive safely. All right, bye. Good night. Well, Benjamin, are you enjoying the classes? Yes, I am, very much. It's, it's very interesting. You're a great teacher. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. Oh, that's all right. Did you have a nice time at the party? Oh, it was lovely. Here, let me move that. Thank you. the cleanest car I've ever seen. Is it new? No, I, I care for things. <laughs> so perfect. From the minute I saw you, I knew. And you knew too, didn't you, Rebecca? I love you. I'm really touched, but to be honest, until tonight, I didn't even know you existed. I exist. In fact, I am going to be central to your existence. Let's take a walk. People saw us leave together. If you're thinking of trying anything, You'll get caught. Shut up! Take me back! What is the matter with you? I just wanted to take a walk. Why don't no. you understand what you are supposed to do? Let me go! Let me go! Ah. Ah. Rebecca! Rebecca! <laughs> Rebecca! Stop! Please help me! Somebody help me! Oh! <laughs> 
wanted to wait until after we were married. Tonight. You're not wearing any underwear. My mother says it's bad. It spoils a woman's figure. Please take me back now. There won't be any problems. I won't report you. Just one thing. I want you to tell me you love me. Please, no more. Don't make me use this. Just say it. Rebecca, say it! Angel, I love you. I really love you. I must find the defendant, Benjamin Nash, not guilty. There was reasonable doubt that the knife in question was ever displayed. And there was substantial evidence, Miss Kendall, that you dressed provocatively, indulged in alcohol, came to the party with one person, and left with a total stranger. You were lucky this time, Miss Kendall. Your Honor, this judgment is archaic and unconscionable. Miss Kendall, this is my courtroom and you will remain silent. My verdict is final. <laughs> this is the biggest, strongest lock you've got, right? Because that's what I want. Yes, ma'am. Nothing human can get through this thing, I tell you. Okay. Rebecca. 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 No. Rebecca. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. Your new boyfriend said he wanted to surprise you, and they folded your laundry and left you a rose. Would you mind coming upstairs with me, Mr. Kavanaugh? Oh, sure, fine. Yeah. Nice, but I, I wanted something on an upper level. Oh, well, I'm afraid I don't have anything there right now, but um, what I can do is give you a call and let you know when something opens up. Yeah. So why don't you give me your number? It's unlisted. I'll call you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.
Great. Just what I need. Crazy guys out there. It was Benjamin Nash, I know it. Lady, you can't go around accusing people. You don't have any witnesses, no proof that it was him. So let's just file this report and we'll take it from there. Oh, what's the point? It's the best I can do. this has been with me i never unpacked it no, i feel like a criminal sneaking around in the middle of the night can you believe it's the only advice the police could offer me oh. well unfortunately that's all the law will allow them to do no i haven't worked this hard since i studied for the bar yeah thanks for flying in you know how i hate doing this on my own yeah 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 you know i still wish you'd move down to l.a it'd be great Besides, I could keep an eye on you. Mm. Well, it took me two years to get this teaching position. I'm not going anywhere. Besides, I want to work on getting tenure. I would advise you to get rid of this thing. It's registered. Yeah, and what happens when you use it on the wrong person? You know how I feel about guns, Angela. I need protection. Not like this. This is an accident waiting to happen. Look, why don't you let me hold on to it for a while until you've had time to think about it? In case of an emergency, you can just mail it in from L.A. Yeah, very funny. Mm -hmm. Your qualifications are impeccable, but we're only hiring busboys and at minimum wage. I just got accepted into the graduate program in philosophy, and my financial aid package is not that great. My parents are kind of hard up, and every little bit helps. Okay. Let me see if I can get you on as a waiter. The money's a lot better, but uh, you'll need some training. No, anything. And whatever hours you want, I'll arrange my class schedule around it. You have no idea how important this is to me. It's refreshing to meet someone with your tenacity. Thank you. If we subscribe to this philosophy, our ideals of happiness and freedom are a matter of perspective. One person's happiness is uh, another person's hell. Depends on which side of the looking glass you're on. That's all for today. Dr. Kendall. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if maybe I could schedule an appointment to see... I don't make appointments directly. You should know that about me by now. Call the department secretary. She'll set something up. Bitch. Hello? I don't like that robe, Rebecca, but put on the other one. But I do love your hair tonight. Rebecca. Rebecca, why don't you bring us up to date on your progress? Mm. Thanks, Ken. I'd be happy to. I have some good news. The ad hoc committee wasn't as difficult as we had anticipated, so I think we can eliminate all the problems. That we we oh, oh, dear. Dear. Uh, did I get any on you? You stay away from me. Sorry, it was a mistake. It's never a mistake with you. If there's anything I can do. Save me. 
Stay alive. Please. Stay alive. I accidentally spilled some coffee on her, and she just went crazy. Please try and be a little more careful. Yes, sir. As soon as I file this motion, we'll be able to restrain him legally. Mm. It didn't work the last time. What, he stayed back a uh, hundred yards just uh, far enough to see me come and go from the bookstore, the market, the campus. I can't. I can't start again. Yes, you can, Rebecca. Now get a new postal box. Put your phone in my mother's maiden name. Even the DMV won't have your new address. Listen, you shouldn't be working this late. I, I, I don't know how you stand at my whining all the time. I'll let you go. Good night, Angela. Bye, Rebecca. Benjamin. Benjamin, please. to see Rebecca Kendall. All right, now don't jump all over me. I really don't want to go to this. Come on, Rebecca. You know you're going to have a good time once you get there. Come on, how long has it been since you've seen Alice? Quite a while. Yeah, I know. Ever since you've moved down here, you never go out anymore. I mean, you would just stay shut in, preparing for your classes. I'm lucky to have a teaching position. It's humiliating leaving Berkeley that way. I know. It's all in the past now, though. Uh, you know, you pay a fortune for a view you never look at. I like it that way. You know, it's been over two years since you've heard from him. Why? Why haven't I heard from him? Because it's over. You've lost him. And what more convincing do you need? Rebecca. It's time to get on with it. Do I know you? Uh, not yet. You were staring at me. Well, you obviously don't know how beautiful you are. I'm Philip Parrish. 
He's about to become the youngest partner at Bates and Brom. You have no idea what it took to get her here. If this works, she's got her security. I've been trying to fix him up for years. He'll date a woman once, and that's it. <laughs> Just an eyelash. Didn't want it to get in your eye. So the party was a setup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were the only one I knew who was harder to please than Philip. I figured you'd either fall in love or nitpick each other to death. <laughs> to Rebecca and Philip. May they always be as happy as they are tonight, in love and surrounded by friends. Thank you. Our turn, dear. I, uh, I waited until now to uh, give you this. I knew she couldn't back down in front of all of you. <laughs> this ring has been in my family for years. It's so beautiful. And it fits. I like that. What? Your jacket on my chair makes it feel real. It doesn't feel real. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. But it's so good. I think it can't be. Feel real now? Mm, I'm not sure. Try harder. <laughs> You're killing that dress. I love this dress. Fess up. The reason why you went shopping with me, you were afraid I would buy something conservative and crap. Hmm? I must confess, though, I did have an ulterior motive. Try getting out of this dress without my help. <laughs> God, I love you. Oh, I know I forgot to show you something. This came to me in my office. One of the guys over there is probably doing a number. Listen to this, it's pretty funny. You may not marry Rebecca. We have been engaged for years, and she knows it. She is only putting off the moment of reckoning. You must never see her again. I forbid it. Signed, Benjamin Nash. <laughs> it's only a joke. No. It's not a joke, Phil. What was Philip's reaction? Terrible. He was angry that it had happened to me. But there was something else. For a minute, I thought he didn't believe that nothing had happened between Benjamin and me. It was two years ago. I thought I'd lost that little bastard. Well, I did too. I was finally feeling normal. <laughs> Getting on with my life. I know. Look. Get another restraining order. It'll keep him quiet for a while. Where's he living now? How the hell would I know? You think I've been stalking him? We can't serve him without an address. Look, I'm going to be in court all afternoon. I want you to go up to Michael Carvella's office. Who's he? He's a PI. He's got an office on the sixth floor in this building. I don't like this, Angela. He's a really good friend. Okay, we had a little thing once. He used to be a cop. He got shot in the leg, and things were really tough for him for a while. A private investigator? Another one? He's a really good guy, and he works fast. You think I'd recommend some creep to you? Come on, Rebecca, this is no big deal. 
genius it is. Good morning. I'm Michael Carvella. Angela tells me you're a doctor. A philosophy. I teach. And I thought all philosophers were 80 years old with long white beards. In my opinion, you're much too beautiful to be a philosopher. Thanks for the compliment, but I'd like to get on with this. Okay, fine. After I find this uh, Benjamin Nash's address, you want me to serve him as well? No, that's not necessary. Angela's my attorney. Just get me the address. Does he owe you money? No. Why? A woman wants to find a man. It's either money or personal. Personal? Look, Dr. Kendall, sometimes in cases like this, I find the client, and after I do, the client's very sorry I did, you know what I mean? You want to talk about it? I don't usually go to private detectives for psychotherapy. If you uh, change your mind, just pick up a phone and call. I'm always around. Just get me the address. you were getting out of domestic cases. Uh, it's a favor to Angela. Besides, it's a no-brainer. It'll be about an hour's work on the phone for you. It's my problem, Philip. I'm taking care of it. If it's your problem, it's my problem. We're in this together, Rebecca. That's how relationships work. Please don't leave me out. You don't have to deal with this. But I want to deal with it. I want to deal with what affects me. Look, I've been very successful at controlling my own life. <laughs> well, I haven't been so lucky. It's not luck. It's uh, a way of living your life. So it's my fault a lunatic latched on to me. No, of course not. That's not what I'm saying. Look, I want you to share your thoughts and decisions with me, especially those that impact both of us. I know, and that's what I love about you. <laughs> and I'm attacking you for it. I'm told guys like these usually aren't dangerous. Let me show you something. I've been studying guys like these for years. Erotomaniacs. They have this morbidly exaggerated ideal of romanticized love. And they go on this obsessive pursuit until they find it. This one... Met a woman at a charity dance. That one... Worked in the same building as she did. He asked her out constantly, finally started threatening her. She changed jobs. Then he sat outside her house for hours. Police couldn't do anything. No law against a guy being in love. These women are all dead. Do I pay you now? No. Let's keep official. We'll go through Angela. You sure you don't want me to serve him for you? No. I don't. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when you find this Nash guy, uh, go easy on him. He can't be that bad. I don't know why, but you keep trying to worm information out of me ever since I walked in here. So let me satisfy your curiosity. You want to know how I feel about this guy? Yeah. I wish I could kill him. And if I did, no jury on earth would convict me. You slept with him. We were working together on a case when he got shot. I visited him in the hospital, we got to be friends, and then, you know. Besides, I think Michael's very smart. And he's also very cute. <sighs> Angela. Oh, come on, he's a very good person. A little intense sometimes, maybe, but nobody's perfect. Come on, he's working for you. You don't have to kiss him on the mouth. Did he get Benjamin's address? Yeah. I want him out of my life once and for all. Look, it's a piece of paper. It's a restraining order. It's not going to stop him from doing what he wants to. The only thing that will stop him is a knife in his heart. Uh, yes, sir. All six cameras are working. Uh, I don't think we'll have any problems uh, monitoring the, uh, the location. Looks pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Philip. I was getting worried. It's almost 11. Oh, God, the Debussy concert. Uh, and dinner at Panevino. He was at the research library working on that article that's due in the morning. I completely forgot. I'm sorry. 
As long as you're safe, that's all that matters. Oh, I'll make it up to you. Want a suggestion? <laughs> It's me. I'm leaving the surveillance area. It's uh, <laughs> 3.20 a.m. No sign of any activity. Talk to you later. Bye. Yes, so security, ma'am. Uh, there's a Lieutenant Calder, LAPD, to see you. Does he have ID? Well, we'd like to ask you a few questions. There was a crime committed last night. What crime? Benjamin Nash was murdered last night. Benjamin? Dead? Yes. And your vehicle remained in the parking structure the entire time. I've already told you. I was in the library from the end of my last class until 10.30. Nobody else has another set of keys? No. You didn't happen to get a receipt from the garage, something with a timestamp, maybe? I'm faculty. I have a parking pass. There was a considerable amount of mud on the rear tires and fender of your car. Have you taken it off road lately? There's construction going on all over campus. The roads are a mess. Lieutenant, my client has nothing more to say. Either you book her or we're out of here. I'd like to ask her a few more questions about the genes we found. Sorry, no. May I remind you, Counselor, your client came here voluntarily? And she's leaving voluntarily now. Dr. Kendall, don't go anywhere. I have no reason to, Lieutenant. What is wrong with you? A low-life street hood knows not to talk to the police. You let them search your house and car? I have nothing to hide. Everybody has something to hide. And they're entitled to less privacy is about. But once you weigh that right, they can dig into anything they find. What could they find? Oh, you said they hauled away things from your car. You are not getting it. This is very serious. No, you're not getting it. He's dead. Benjamin Nash is finally out of my life. Yes, and you could be accused of arranging it. Oh, stop. They're not charging me with anything. Michael said that there was blood all over the place. The coroner's office says there were six pints of blood all over the walls and floors. No human being can lose that much and live. And from what I can gather, they think that either you or someone working for you probably disposed of it. <laughs> and don't think that they can't prosecute for murder without a body. They can and do. You need a good lawyer. What's wrong with no, you? No, you need a criminal lawyer. You're trying to scare me, right? You don't really think I'm in trouble? The time to get counsel is before the trouble. Look, I want you to talk to Trevor Keegan right away. No matter how upset you are, he is the best. Upset? He's dead. 
I haven't been this happy in years. Well, Ms. Kendall. Mr. Keegan. Philip Parrish. How are you? Uh, please, have, have a seat. Why don't we get the uglies out of the way first? The cost of the defense. The cost of this defense will be $80,000. Do we have a problem? <laughs> Mr. Keegan, the university just put me on a leave of absence. I'm not even sure I have a job left. I'll handle the finances, Rebecca. Yeah. There's no problem. I can't let you do that. This is first-degree murder we're looking at. And by the way, if we get it knocked down to manslaughter, there's, there's no rebate. There's... All right. Anything you tell me here is privileged. It goes with me to the grave. I've looked through this police report. There are a few questions I'd like to ask you. Did you ever visit Benjamin Nash at his house? Of course not. Final forensic report found strands of your hair on his bedroom carpet. Fingerprints were discovered in a vase in the kitchen. He'd always steal things from me. Jewelry, books. <laughs> Probably a hairbrush. This went on for years. No matter how many times I moved, no matter how many times I changed the locks, he'd always find a way in. The police found tire tracks matching yours at the Shoal Canyon landfill. It's just a few minutes from Nash's house. I was on campus all evening. And the blood on your jeans? What are you getting at? Oh, well, you're an intelligent woman, college professor. You understand that my ability to defend you increases proportionally with my grasp of the true facts of this case. You kill him? No, I didn't. Well, that's a shame. I could probably have gotten you off a hell of a lot easier if you had. Phil, do you mind if I call you Phil? You're very important to us. In fact, I'd even say you're critical. I'd like to see you and Rebecca get married as soon as possible. No Absolutely. Way. We're already getting married. Why don't we just... I'm not about to allow anyone to parade our relationship around a courtroom. I won't even discuss it. <laughs> very well. I can't force my clients to do anything against their free will, but when the trial starts, I want you at the courthouse every day, your arm around Rebecca, leading her past the reporters, protecting her like Sir Galahad. Why the show? Oh, Miss Kendall, it is a show. You're accused of a brutal crime. I want the jury to see you as a sensitive, frail woman, loving fiancé whose life was in such good shape, she'd never have any reason to kill Benjamin Nash. Mr. Keegan... I agree with you. I don't know if I can get away for an extended period of time. Oh, Phil, you take a leave of absence, okay? We need you in this. And there's one other thing. Because of the stress that Rebecca's been under, I'd like her to see a psychiatrist, a Dr. Adichek. Why do you want me to see a shrink? Well, I may be able to come up with a better plea, diminish capacity. That way I'll be able to bring out all the things that this Nash character's done to you. You want me to plead guilty when I'm innocent? Let him finish. He's finished. <laughs> Miss Kendall, don't leave this office. Let's get something straight. I am the person that is constructing the defense that is going to keep you out of jail. So I expect your complete cooperation. Now, this Nash thing, this is a real heartbreaker for you. If you change your plea, you give me something to work with. By the time I finish telling the jury what you've suffered through, they'll eat it up. You'll get off. But if you force me to plead you not guilty, every sick and depraved thing that he has ever done, I have to keep it away from the jury because it establishes your clear, your very clear motive for killing him. We understand each other. Number 34, Nakamura, party of four, you're up next. I understand, Mr. Applegate. Most of the evidence is circumstantial. All of it. Well, sir, most folks don't always oblige us by killing somebody in front of a bunch of witnesses. At least you boys could have dug me up a body, give me something to poke around in. Well, we are digging, sir. So are you. Now, it seems that the body was stabbed repeatedly, dragged out the back door, and it's evident that it was transported in her car. We popped the trunk, found a pair of her jeans stained with blood. You sure it's his blood? Typo positive, sir. 80% of this country is O positive. Rebecca Kendall is O positive. I understand that, sir. It's the best we can do until we get an actual sample from Nash's body. Well, what about the mud on the tires? Decomposed granite. Kind you find up in the foothills, say around Shoal Canyon landfill. We find bodies up there all the time, sir. Well, look into it, Lieutenant. But until you get something concrete, it... Close. It's all mush. I want some grit. This one is going to the jury. Well, why is that? 
Rebecca Kendall's got herself Trevor Keegan. He don't talk to God unless it's in front of a jury. Maybe you should widen your stance. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Huh. Prosecution star witness. Angela, they subpoenaed me. What was I supposed to do? Keep your big mouth shut. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. I didn't say or do anything to implicate her. There was enough evidence in Benjamin's house to take the police right to her doorstep. I don't care how much evidence there was. It's just not possible. You don't know her. You're right. I don't know her. I just know what I saw. Excuse me. Angela, will you help us here? Mr. Tegan, is there any statement? No, sir. There will not be a comment. Thank you. What's that? Transcripts from preliminary hearings. That's two months of hard work. No, sir. That's two months of hard work. Onward, Mr. Parrish. Onward. Well, then I'll phrase the question differently. Upon leaving your office with Benjamin Nash's address, did Ms. Kendall say anything to you? Yes, she did. What exactly did she say? She asked me a question. Which was? She said, you want to know how I feel about that guy. And what did you answer? I didn't. Perhaps Ms. Kendall answered the question herself. Would that be the case? It would. What did she say? She said... I wish I could kill him. That's a pretty stupid thing to say. I was angry. He got me mad. Dr. Conway, I want to be very clear about your testimony here. It's very important. You're saying that you're unable to analyze whose blood you found on the mattress and on Dr. Kendall's blue jeans. Only that they came from the same person. Yeah, your lab drug tested Benjamin Nash for his employer well over a year ago. Actually, we tested him twice, a pretest, and then in his case, a spot check six months later. Bill, will you explain to me why you are unable to match the blood sample from Benjamin Nash's drug test to the ones found on my client's blue jeans? There's a difference between a dried blood sample, like the kind the police gave us, and the real thing. We're limited as to the kind of tests we can run. So, what you're saying is that you don't know when this person was killed, you don't know where this person was killed. In fact, you don't know who this person was. <laughs> I'm wondering why we're here. Strange reading about yourself as though you were somebody else. I wish it were. I'm afraid, Philip. Here's a shoulder. Go ahead and lean. I used to wonder if I'd ever fall in love. You know, I mean, really fall in love. You read about it. You go to the movies to see it. But you never know what it really feels like until it so completely overtakes your life. I can't imagine life without you. Have some more coffee, please. Sure, Governor. So, what was she like before all the insanity started? Why? You interested? Well, now that I've handled her case, I'm kind of intrigued, yes? Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised she didn't go over the edge a long time ago. Somebody should have helped her. Somebody did? Me? Uh. Oh. What, you mean a man? Don't get political on me, Angela. You always resort to these overly simplistic male points of view, Michael. Well, if it works, don't fix it. You think you have an answer to everything, don't you? Not true. I didn't have an answer for us. So what about Philip? What about him? Well, they've been together for almost a year. How come he didn't do something? That's not his style. Well, what is his style? When he talks to you, he looks right past you. Bottom line, Angie, I don't trust him. Well, trust him or not, Rebecca's not the kind of woman to let a man come to her rescue like that. Mm, maybe. We'll see. Remember, look her straight in the eye. I don't want the jury to see you avoiding her. Whoever she is, she just lost her only son. I know this must be difficult for you, Mrs. Nash. But have you heard from your son since he disappeared? No. I've had to face the worst. He's been taken from me. 
How long have you known about Rebecca Kendall? Well, I guess it must be here. They had their first date about five years ago. Date? Be quiet. Soon after that first date, your son and the defendant were involved in litigation. Was your son acquitted of any and all criminal charges brought against him by Rebecca Kendall? Yes, sir. Mrs. Nash, after these court proceedings, did your son continue to see Rebecca Kendall? She wouldn't let him alone. She was obsessed. Benjamin tried to be nice to her. He invited her over to the house for dinner several times. I felt so sorry for my Benjamin. I think he was frightened by her intensity. He always said she wanted revenge. Thank you, Mrs. Nash. I have nothing further. We, uh, have no further questions for this witness. But she was lying, acting as though Benjamin were normal and I was crazy. So you want the jury to see me take apart a mother who has just lost her only son? You know what? I wanted her off the stand as quickly as possible. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, my dear lady. You don't get it, do you? You really don't get it. You're on trial here, not Benjamin Nash. You've chosen to plead yourself innocent. Now, I have to keep the jury from knowing what he put you through, because if they knew even half of it, they'd believe you killed him. You tied my hands here. You think I did it, don't you? Oh, Answer me. Uh, I'll tell you this. Some of the worst lawyers believe their clients are innocent. Now, I've decided to make a change in our defense, to take the position that Benjamin Nash, clearly a pathological and clever person, killed someone possessing his own blood type to set Rebecca up and destroy her. It would explain the blood on the genes. That's ridiculous. Why would he do that? You don't get it, do you? If he thought he were losing me to another man, that's exactly the kind of thing he would do. It's just a theory. Yeah? Well, so's the Constitution, and I don't have to prove it to the last centilla. The DA has to do that. All I have to do is provide reasonable doubt. A plausible alternative theory. Let me tell you something. I paint this guy a raving lunatic. I can bring out the whole freak show that he put you through. You really think anyone will believe it? I didn't say my theory was true. I said I would present the argument. Angela. What's going on? And their first witness. Keegan called last night. They're changing their defense. Dr. Kendall told you that once again, Benjamin Nash was harassing her fiance. Was she enraged? Did, did she act like a woman who had the urge to kill? No. In all the years that you've known Dr. Kendall, have you ever seen her be violent in any way? Never. She's always been extremely kind and gentle. Rebecca's the kind of person who would always be there to help a friend in need, or to take in a stray dog or cat to find it at home. Uh-huh. Oh, please, your witness. Well, now we know how Miss Kendall feels about dogs and cats. What she felt about Benjamin Nash isn't quite so clear. Let me remind you that you're an officer of the court and you're under oath. Now, did Miss Kendall ever indicate that she'd like to hurt Benjamin Nash in any way? Only facetiously. Oh, what exactly did she say? Objection. She said the remarks were in jest. Overruled. The jury can decide how they were meant. Answer the question, please. The only thing that'll stop him is a knife in the heart. Can't you distinguish between Keegan's arguments to the jury and what the truth really is? They should be the same thing. You win. Any way you can. This is all over. You and I are going to go on a long trip together. <sighs> Tuscany's wonderful this time of year. I hear it's wonderful any time of the year. <laughs> I have a friend who lives in San Gimignano. He lives in a castle built in the 12th century. And from the tower, all you can see are rolling hills of olive groves and cypress trees. Mm, sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'll make some calls tomorrow. All rise. Court is now in session. Please be seated. In the interest of fairness, I'm permitting the state at this time to reopen its case so we may hear testimony from a witness who heretofore has been unknown to the court. The defense will have sufficient recess to prepare its cross-examination. 
Benjamin Nash uh, came to our laboratory several months ago to have us do a DNA test, which in lay terms is a sort of genetic blueprint of his blood. But for what reason did he say that he wanted this DNA test? He said he was about to be named in a paternity suit. <laughs> and you did the test on Benjamin Nash? Yes, yes, I did. Doctor, what is the likelihood of two people having the same DNA genetic picture? Well, aside from identical twins, no other living creature has the same genetic code. Mm. And uh, did you examine two blood samples which were sent to you from the state forensic serologist? Yes, I did. Sample A came from bed sheets found in Benjamin Nash's residence. Sample B came from blue genes belonging to Rebecca Kendall. We subjected both samples to the same DNA test applied to Benjamin Nash's blood. And what were your findings, doctor? Both samples were from the same person, Benjamin Nash. Change your plea. No. Damn it, could you for once in your life do what the man tells you to do? I can't. I didn't do it. Do you have any idea how sick of all this I am? Oh, yes. Believe me, yes. Well, then you'd better start listening to what he's saying. I just don't know how much more of this I can tolerate. You don't have to. You can walk away. I can't. Oh, don't tempt me. You think I did it? First, there's the hair on the carpet, then the fingerprints. The evidence is overwhelming. Only the things he stole from me. You heard what I said in court. How did the damn blood get on the jeans? I don't know. He did things I never understood. He was capable of anything. That just doesn't answer the questions, does it? I've been waiting for this. Waiting for what? The flood of questions, the doubt in your voice. It's been there all along, hasn't I it? Promised there'd be answers. No, no. You said you weren't worried. You said you loved me, and that's all that mattered. Maybe I just can't love you that much. You want to sort out the nuance of your personal relationship on your own time? That's up to you. But right now, we have to come up with an explanation for the blood on the jeans, or we have to change our plea. I want you to leave. Not your decision. What? It's time for you to decide which side of the courtroom you're standing on. If you believe I'm guilty, I want you out. Well, then I'm out. I thought something like this might happen. Oh, please. This is a subpoena. You're my first witness in the morning. Can you think? Of anyone besides yourself that had access to Dr. Kendall's car without her knowledge? No. That if she didn't use her car to transport Benjamin Nash's body, then that leaves, uh... That leaves you, doesn't it? <laughs> you can't be kidding. Of course I didn't. Well, she must have. Yes or no? Huh. Answer the question. Uh... You think your fiancé killed Benjamin Nash? Yes. Yes? Are you going to marry Dr. Kendall? No. <laughs> so yesterday, you were willing to marry a killer, but not today. I wasn't sure until yesterday. Sure. Or was it that you weren't sure until you found yourself in jeopardy? I suggest to you, Mr. Paris, that when the investigation of murder led towards your fiancé, you remained silent, believing in the absence of a body that they would never make the connection on the trail of blood. Objection! Mr. Keegan. But when the state made that connection, you abandoned your fiancé, wishing the court to think that even you thought she was guilty. Your Honor, I object. I've asked for a ruling. Mr. Keegan, I'm going to hold you in contempt. Benjamin Nash stalked, harassed, Dr. Kendall for years. Nothing ever, ever, ever happened to him. But boy, the minute that he crossed Mr. Parrish's path, he was murdered. He was murdered! You killed Benjamin Nash, you, because he got in the way of your perfect life. Your Honor! You might as well take a seat. You're lucky the jury will be out all night. Did you plan to set Philip up from the beginning? 
Or did it just come to you in one of your moments of brilliance? I win. Now, I thought I made that clear to you, but maybe you're not as bright as I thought. And the way I win, I put in that jury's mind any reasonable doubt that someone other than my client committed first-degree murder. When you wouldn't cooperate, you, I had to come up with an alternative. And your Philip was it. Yours is the only profession that makes a virtue out of not recognizing right from wrong. Jury's been sequestered. You just make sure you're back here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Whatever happens, if I never see you again, it'll be too soon. What he did was very smart. But he was trying to save your life. Yes, that's certainly worth fighting for. I don't like the way you sound. I'm going to come over there right now. No, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm going to take a bath and try to relax. Okay, I'll talk to you in the morning. All right? Okay. Good night, Angela. Good night. seen her they've heard from her quite frankly I'm, I'm worried about her safety well, don't insult our intelligence keegan last night i overheard your client say to you that if she never saw you again it would be too soon now i admit to having similar sentiments but the fact remains that she knew she intended to split and that she conveyed that intent to you it's an innocent conversation you shut your head. the police found no signs of foul play we have evidence the clothes were packed identification taken and we have a witness to a remark which implies your client's intent to not present herself now i am Counsel, are you with us? I am comfortable that Rebecca Kendall's failure to appear was volitional. And I'm therefore prepared to have the jury render its verdict even in the absence of a defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. I can't believe that she would split before the verdict. I mean, she was depressed, but she didn't sound crazy. Well, I checked the rest of the apartment. There's no sign of a struggle. Oh, my God. Her clothes are gone. And her suitcase. Stupid, stupid girl. She didn't split. What? No fugitive takes a bubble bath before they jump bail. Mr. Patterson did it. He seemed so nice and normal. We felt that he was getting blamed for what she did. Well, so much for the system working. Well, I don't know about the system working, but I've been snooping around my old precinct. They've got you under surveillance. What? Well, they figure Rebecca's going to contact you, so don't use your phone. Use my office, okay? What about you? They're not interested in me. I was a witness for the state. So you're convinced that she didn't bolt? Well, that's my hunch, but you tell me. You know her better. It's not like Rebecca to panic. She didn't bolt. That's all I needed to hear. I gotta check something out. If you scream, no one will hear you. 
This is going to hurt. I'll be careful. My mother says with band-aids it hurts less if you do it fast. Ah! Come on. Perfect, isn't it? You like that? Here, here, come here. And look. Let me show you your room. Here, come. No. Come here. Come on. No. Rebecca, come no. on. No. Oh, come on. No. 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 Let me go in. Stop it. No. Stop it. No. I want Stop it. Be still. Do you want these off? Do you want these off? Let me take them off. Okay. That's right. Is that better? Ah, no! Come no. here! No, I'm sorry. But don't make me hurt you. I'll be back and check on you in a little while. Doctor, the other day in court, you said something that really interested me. What was that? Well, you said that Benjamin Nash had been tested two times for drugs, right? Right. Why twice? Well, that's kind of confidential. Well, uh, your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to tell you something. <laughs> well, his employer asked us to test him again because he was acting rather strangely. Mood swings, attendance problems, and uh, some of his fellow workers said he had needle marks on his arms. But his drug tests came back clean, didn't they? That's correct. Maybe uh, he was having mood swings because of a love affair. I doubt it. But they said that he was worried about some sort of a paternity suit, didn't they? Are you kidding? The guy was weird. trust you so that you could be free in here. Please. And now I see that I can't. Please don't do that. I'll be able to... Oh, no, no. something to eat? That make you feel better? Come on. Come on, get something to eat. That, that'll make you feel better. You, here, have some, have some juice. Come on. Here, that's a girl. That's a good girl. That's right. Come on. That's a good Until you learn to behave, you will not get anything to eat. I worked very hard to make that lunch for you. I have done everything for you. The only thing you can do for me is let me go. Please. So you can go back to your Philip. 
I saw the two of you that night. No. All of no. Tavia's hands all over you. Now he walked out on me. It's all over. Philip would never do that. Yes, he did. It's true. I'm not lying. Don't ever lie to me! I'm not lying! Don't, no. don't lie to me! I'd like to get some information on one of your clients. You're not allowed to give that out. You gotta talk to the manager. Talk to the manager, huh? What's this, uh, this blood doping business all about? Uh, a lot of people who train there have their blood removed and frozen to prepare for competition. Really? Why is that? Uh, right before they compete, they inject the stored blood back into their body. It adds oxygen, you know, for endurance, strength. Well, um, how much blood are we talking about? Just a couple of pints. Some of the guys store up to five or six pints if they compete a lot. Well, can't that be dangerous? Not really. They have it removed pretty slowly over the course of a year or so. It's something you plan very carefully. Yeah, I'm sure. It's very late. You must be hungry. Would you like something to eat? Yeah. You like it? It's good. I made it. You know, if you promise to behave, I can let you eat with one hand. I'll behave. Promise? I promise. I'm right-handed. I know. Yeah. By the way, they found you guilty. You planned it that way. It's better. See, now if you go back, they'll just arrest you and send you to prison. You really have to stay with me now. You've been very clever, Benjamin. Oh, you're just saying that to butter me up. You don't care anything about me, but you will. Maybe I will. I don't know, it's so new and strange. Rebecca. Will you marry me, Rebecca? I don't know you well enough, Benjamin. But if you're patient, you give me some time. Don't! I bought you something to wear. Benjamin was storing his own blood. That explains the needle marks. That's why he stopped stalking her for those two years. He was getting ready for this. Exactly. That was part of the whole plan. The freak is still alive and he's got Rebecca. <sighs> you 
You look beautiful. Do you like it? Yes, it's... It's very nice. Would you like some wine? No, thank you. I saw you have wine with Philip. sorry about our little spat last night. But I think you understand you had it coming. Whatever you say. And as far as the other things, it's best we wait till after we're married. I'm sure you're right. You have such beautiful hair. Thank you. Benjamin. You've... Well, I, I would like to try... to do something for you. I promise I'll behave. I, it's just you've been doing everything for me. I like that. You like eggs, Benjamin? Very much. I thought of everything. Huh? huh? You certainly did. Um, you like eggs, uh, one or two? Two, please. And over easy, not too hard. Some juice? Please. And my bacon, not too crispy, please. All right, I'll try. I'm not very experienced with eggs. Those are great. You like them that way? Yeah, they're good. to tell me over all these years you never mentioned some place he might take her? Maybe some place that he hung out when he was a kid? Oh, nothing, nothing. It was all just fantasy stuff. I... Angela, there's a call for you. 
He knows I'm here. Hello? Angela. Oh, my God. Rebecca? Where are you? I'm not sure. It's in the middle of an oil field. A place called Deer Park Reserve. I'm in a, a shed. It's, uh... I don't know. A tin shed. And it's got a sign on it. Uh, sample room. Please, come and get me. Rebecca, I know how he did it, and I can prove it. Why should I trust you? Because I'm all you got right now. Please, let me help you. Yes or no? Good, I'll take that as a yes. I'll be down there as soon as I can. I told Angela to call the police if I didn't get back to her in a couple of hours. Is he dead? No, but I wish he were. Then we have to go back. Are you crazy? Why? Because the police still think you did it. No, I can't come back in no, that house. You have to. We can't let that son of a bitch get away with this. You have to go back. I'm having a hard time with this, honey. I mean, if we're gonna get you off this rap, we have to have proof that he, that he did kidnap you. He did. He locked me in this room. I believe you, sweetheart. After all, I did drive down here to find you, didn't I? No! no! Jim Slut. You just go from one man to the next, don't you? Come on. You haven't heard it yet. Just put the knife down. No! no! You move one step closer and I will slit her throat. Rebecca! No! 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 What you did to me, you bitch! Rebecca! Rebecca! You are destroying everything we have. I gave up everything for you! Get in! Get in! first date. We were going to take a walk. You were telling me how much you loved me. Becca!
The court apologizes for the three-week delay in the dismissal of this case. We regret deeply what you have had to endure. You're free to go. Thank you, Your Honor. Great. You know what I'd like to do? What's that? I'd like to go for a walk. Okay. On my own. Well, uh, would you like me to stick around? I'll call you. I don't know how to thank you. Sure you don't want to ride? This is for me. <laughs> <laughs> 